Cody, Paige, Clinton Yates, Frank Isola, Jackie McMullen. Check this out. Anthony Davis having one of the great seasons. Top three MVP. Whoa. Had this dunk last night. Like He's awesome. tall. Okay. And even he looks like a four-year-old trying to get cookies from the top shelf next to Bobon. Also, being in the middle of a no-hitter and your manager having no idea about it and ready to take you out. Show okay. no respect. He won a World Series. It's Around the Horn, the show of competitive banter. Here's Tony Rielli. Clinchage. NBA standings right now. And the most likely playoff matchups via BPI. Frank Isola, I want you out west with the recent clinchers, the Spurs, Pelicans, Thunder, and Jazz. Who's best and who's best positioned here? Well, I think look at that 4-5 matchup if OKC does get the Utah Jazz. And let's give credit to the Jazz. On January 22nd, they were 19-28. and 28. Where you're going They've here. gone 28-5. and five. Quinn Snyder, the coach, Rudy Gobert, Ricky Rubio, Donovan Mitchell, they don't get enough credit. But in the immortal words of Stephen A. Smith, however, I wouldn't mind playing them in the first round. So if I'm Oklahoma City with all that experience, I'll take Utah in the first round. Uh-huh. Jackie Mack, how about you? Okay, but all that experience, Frank, got you in all sorts of bad places during the course of the year for Oklahoma City. Well, one day they're good, one day they're bad, one day we'll share the ball. One day, no, we shouldn't share the ball anymore because that's not helping us. One day Carmelo isn't part of it. No, wait, we need Carmelo to be part of it. We want Russell to average triple-double. No, maybe we don't. We want Paul George to do more. And through it all, the one guy they don't have, and you know it, is Andre Roberson. Their season changed the day he went down. He was the James Harden, I'm not going to say that anyone could stop James Harden, but he could slow him down. He was so important to them. I cannot in good faith take Oklahoma City in the postseason without Roberson in their lineup. Woody Page, how about you? Well, that was very convincing, uh, Jackie, but you're totally wrong. Frank is right. The team you really want to face, don't want to face in the playoffs, will be Oklahoma City Thunder. And let me start with this one. Uh, Westbrook has 87 games of playoff experience. That's more than the top eight players on the Jazz. The Jazz haven't been there before. And then you take those three players. They have been in a total of eight uh, semifinals in the NBA. One of them has been in the finals. So when you talk about experience, can they get it back together? Paul George has taken over the role for Andre Robinson. He's a he's a former All Defensive Player. He locked himself in the gym in Houston the other night. Had 28 points by himself. So I think he's coming around with the shooting. The Thunder is a team you don't want any part of. They're six and three against the top three teams in the league. That's the best record against those three teams. And that may be the best stat you've given Woody Page. All right, Clinton. Yates set him straight. Yeah, I'm still going to have to take Quinn Snyder over Billy Donovan, though. I mean, if the Thunder were so good all season, I would have believed in this squad, wow. and nobody did as a result of the blend that that team made. They won five games in December, the Jazz did, and they turned things around to get to where they are. I love the way that Quinn Snyder is doing this. You know that I love him. Guy who went to Europe, came back, redid his career, made something of himself. He was, you know, I, I really enjoy the way this Jazz team plays. They're the hottest team in the NBA, and you have to love Donovan Mitchell. Every single thing about this squad me- leads to upset in the first round to me. I believe it's going to happen. Listen to Yates, and he, and he sounds more convincing because you're wearing a tie and you're talking with a pen in your hand, which is always a good thing. <laughs> I really like that. I saw a... Uh, I, wish, I wish I had a pen. Remember about Andre Roberson, who Jackie brought up. They did replace him with Corey Brewer, who's done a good job. And in terms of Billy Donovan, come on, he had to work in some pretty high-maintenance guys into his rotation. And Carmelo, they got him to kind of accept that third role. So all things considered, I really think that the Thunder are about where they are. And they'll be a better playoff team because Jackie knows this. Steven Adams in the playoffs is a better player than he is during the regular season. And Jackie, last word. Yeah, there's some truth to that, too. But, um, by the way, while we're talking about all the teams that you fear in the West, shouldn't we just mention the Pelicans really, really quickly? Because what Anthony Davis is doing is just completely off the charts. And who wants to play them in the first, second, or any other round? Yeah, right. Nobody. And nobody mentioned the San Antonio Spurs. Woody had your great answer about experience in the playoffs. That great playoff experience Carmelo Anthony has in his career. And Paul George, I mean, but you could have brought up the Spermano Ginobili's on the court, baby. And he's dunking. Did you see it a dunk last night? Love oh, that was so cool. Then he could still that throw it so down. Cool. Two other things with specificity from last night. As Jackie just mentioned, uh, Anthony Davis, this is a dunk of the year nominee, which we like to say, because you never remember what happened 
two days ago in the NBA. LeBron, Merck, Nurkic, Giannis, Hardway over Hardaway. Those are the other nominees. I'm not going to ask you for a vote on dunk of the year. But also, Russell Westbrook. Triple-double with 18 rebounds last night. 16 rebounds in his last game for a triple-double average for the season. Repeating, of course. How come none of you guys have even brought that up to us for one moment all season long that he was that close. Jackie, you expect Westbrook to Westbrook tomorrow night, I'm sure. How impressive would the back-to-back triple-double seasons be that you didn't tell us was coming, by the way? Oh, you, know, you must not have heard me. I think it was you were muting me so loud you missed that part. But, no, listen, it is incredible. It really is incredible. And, and, and last year, remember we, I remember in preseason last year we were all saying, well, I don't think anyone can ever do this ever again. Yeah, after I remember Oscar you saying Robertson. that. Yeah, but, yeah, boy, yeah. if Westbrook's the one. So to do it twice in a row would be amazing. I would only say this, though. At this point of the season, with everything they've got coming up, you can't chase this record, Tony. Mm. You have to let it come to you in the course of the game. If you start chasing rebounds, I think you're sending the wrong message to you, your, your teammates. And it's a message that I don't think we're asking. Frank's shaking his head. I uh, know about that. Go ahead, Frank. Come on now, Jackie. What? Russell Westbrook is all about competition, about winning. They are 20 and 5 when he gets triple doubles. So I know a lot, some people want to paint it as him being selfish. They're playing Memphis. They need the game tonight. Go for it. Yeah. He'll get the 16 rebounds. Why not? He's a rebounding guard. They need, you need more of them in the NBA. Game is tomorrow. Yates, how about you? Can I just quickly say that that was not the dunk of the year? It wasn't even the best dunk in that game because Thornwell over Liggins. Anthony Davis Agreed. jumped up off the bench to see his own guy get dunked on, which was insane. But I'll get back to Russell Westbrook right now. You have to go for this. <laughs> this is the kind of thing that when you're talking about NBA seasons, when you think about stuff that happens at the NBA the year, at the end of the year in the NBA, fans want it. It is anomal- It is a statistical anomaly that doesn't really matter, but it adds a little bit of a coda onto a season that's been very good for Westbrook. I think he deserves this. I think it's going to be yeah. one of his legacies in the NBA, he and I hope he gets this? it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Woody Page, how about you? Well, I want to remind everybody what Oscar Robertson said back in the day. He said, if I'd known it was that important, I would have gotten more of them. So he probably would have had three, <laughs> four years of that. But they weren't even counting those kind of plays at the time. Uh, you said, Jackie, that you can't you can't really go for it, that you got to let it kind of come to you. No. When you're shooting and you need 38 points, you go out and shoot a lot. When you need assist, you pass all the time. All he has to do, I think, is go to the offensive boards, which he does very effectively, and he'll be able to get it. Problem is that he's only had one time in his career where he's had back-to-back 16 rebound games, right. and that would be earlier this year. So it's not going to be easy, but I think given the, the really the topsy-turvy world of the playoffs still, that he's going to go out and play every minute, and I think he's going to get it, and it's going to be very meaningful. Jackie, last word after the I'm perfectly fine in that scenario, Woody, with Russell West. I'm not rooting against him to get the 16 rebounds. What I'm saying is, if you go around running around that game, not worrying about anything else but the 16 rebounds that all the you bootheads want him to get, it's a bad message going into the postseason about what your team is about and what your team goals are. That's all. Last word to Captain Boothead, Frank Isola. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, it's funny. With all due respect to the statisticians at these games, you know, you would be there in Utah, go. and John Stockton was always getting 12 assists at home, right. 9 on the road. Yeah. So tonight, I mean, uh, tonight, right, right, that, Oklahoma that's City, be careful. I mean, assists, I think you can always say, well, an extra step here, an extra step but, there. Yeah. Rebounds, I don't think Hard there's a debate over yeah. Sometimes rebound, a tip, right? they give it to you. They I think it'll be interesting to see what, I the, like te- that hockey assist what the teammates do, how, how they clear out on those free throws. And <laughs> You see Westbrook Scott. For them. All right, this is uh, the next story. It's my favorite story in the show because we got some, we got some fire for rookie of the year, which you don't typically get. Ben Simmons says he's 100% rookie of the year, and Donovan Mitchell, we mentioned before with uh, the Jazz. Mm, okay, Clinton, I know you love this. Ben Simmons' confidence help or hurt his case. I think it hurts his case, although I like his confidence, but here's the deal. You're not a rookie. He should not even be eligible for this award, in my opinion. I'm sorry. If you've been in the league for a year, you've gotten acclimated to the schedule, you've gotten acclimated to the workout situation, you've gotten acclimated to simply seeing the other guys around you, and that gives you an unfair advantage when it comes to how you vote this. Do I think he's a great player that in all other scenarios, you might measure out against him as being the best? Of course, but I'm sorry. If you've seen the league right. for a year, you're not a rookie. So there's not an against. argument there that he's not even a rookie in his rookie year. Woody Page, you're all about uh, acclimatizing the acclimation <laughs> process in Denver. Go ahead. Yeah, I liked his line saying, how about guys that are 30 years old that come over from the European League and they're considered for the rookie of the year? I mean, that makes sense to me. But I here's the, here's the way I would do it, because I have the wisdom of Solomon, I think. 
not the producer, but the guy from the Bible. I would say that you give him the comeback player of the year or the most improved player. He certainly approved from nothing last year, and then you split the two awards. Okay. So, uh, but so you're you would say in the baseball, award into two. We see what you did you, there, you Solomon. Know, Tony, Jackson's though, shaking her head, no. I don't know why you're giving points to all this nonsense. Listen, uh, Clint, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> Everything you say is true about Ben Simmons, all the acclamation, all that. But the rules are the rules. We have to vote within the parameters of what is given to us. Why? And within those parameters, because that's, I have a ballot and it says vote for rookie of the year. He is a rookie. He didn't play a minute in the NBA. That makes him a rookie, whether you like it or not. Those are the rules. And under those parameters, it, it's a lot closer than 100% me. Donovan Mitchell's been unbelievable. This is the closest rookie of the year vote I can remember in some time. Mm-hmm. But I'm okay. still voting for okay. Ben Simmons. All right. And Frank, how about you? Ben Simmons. Yeah, he is a red shirt rookie, absolutely. And I tend to agree with Clinton because I think being in the league for one year certainly helps you. Maybe we'll get a year when Jason Kidd and Grant Hill both won it. But I do feel like a hypocrite because I've said for the longest time, I'm not going to vote for Ben Simmons. And like Jack, I have a vote also. But winning 14 in a row, they're at 50 wins right now. He is making Without a compelling MP. case. And that dude is in crazy, an incredible player. L- listen to how Frank just lorded that over Clinton and Woody. You know, I have a vote like Jackie. I mean, I'm I'm just, you, you can just happen. rename it Newcomer of the Year, and then you can include the Clinton, Europeans as well. Good, it's a good Clinton's point, but right. it's You know what they should do? The they should give Ben Simmons Rookie of the Year for last year, his rookie Newcomer. season, and then give Mitchell the Rookie of the Year this year. You yeah. can't punish Newcomer. a guy for having an injury. Um, we have a break Why here, but we do have something very important that we need to address. Let's go to a platform. Plasma One here, Woody Page. Behind you is your Blackboard, which is not in your possession today. It belongs to Tyler Kellerman, who won our bracket challenge. And with Woo-hoo. the Blackboard, yeah, Jackie, you're not going to want to applaud this. He's saying Tom Brady is a system quarterback. That is what he's Whoa. using the space for there, Don't which is me. a hot take from, from Tyler Denver? Kellerman. We'll see Where'd what he has in store take. Exactly. for the buy or sell Blackboard on the other side. Around the Horn is brought to you by Jaguar, the art of performance. Ryan! I don't know how else to say this, so I'll just say it. What is it, Linda? I think we should see other people. Are you breaking up with me on a roller coaster? Well, we do have a lot of fun. Maybe we should stay together. An emotional roller coaster? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. I just need a little me time. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Buy or sell. I'm not a perfect feeling athlete right now, you know, by any means. There is a timetable, but I'm not going to share it with you guys. As far as you know, participation in this offseason, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I've not picked up a, the Duke and, and started throwing it yet. I, I don't I don't think you need to get into the minutia of the balls. <laughs> Straight from the Colts mouth, Woody Page. He hasn't been throwing a regulation ball. What are you buying? What are you selling from Andrew Luck? I'm buying that he's very optimistic, that he's confident that he's going to come back even better than he was before. I'm selling that he is. I don't think he's ever going to be the same quarterback. The Colts are any better than they were when he left being there. And I really don't trust the process when you're using a K- K2 small ball. Mm-hmm. Clint Yates, how about you? Yeah, I'm selling all of this because he seems to be not only defiant, but also ignorant as to what's going on. I'm sorry. I can't remember the last time Andrew Luck started a football game. I just can't. And to me, until you get back on the field, I'm not going to be too worried about what you say you're going to do. On top of that, he's had all sorts of injury issues beyond the arm in his career. You don't have to lie to us, dude. Once you know you're ready to come back, you can just say that. I don't know who you're fighting against. Frank. The old saying is your best ability is availability. He has missed 26 games over the last three years. Last year, this was the most underreported story in the NFL. It's a troubling story. I feel bad for him. I don't think he's ever going to be that same player anymore. Um, why are we calling him ignorant? I, I don't know what you guys are talking about. We, we ask, I'm sure that. he would rather not do this press press conference. He was asked to do it. He's answering the questions to the best of his ability. He's not going to put a timetable because people like us will make a big deal when he doesn't meet the timetable that he's supposed to. I don't know if he's going to be the same. He probably doesn't know that either. But you want him to stand up there and say that? This guy has gone has been through the ringer physically and mentally. And what you're seeing is some of that mental I think everything he's saying, Jackie, I agree with you. Though. There's a plan in place. I'm going to keep trusting the plan. That's fine. What do you want him to say? It's just yeah, a stunner yeah. to hear that a professional yeah. athlete, quarterback, 
hasn't been throwing that, a regulation. I understand that, but that's not his choice, right? That's the right, rehab they right. set out. Understandably, for him. but it's just a stunning thing to hear. We'll move on. Buyers still too. The Gronk versus the Patriots stories that are piling up, Jackie. I want your take on this. Uh, it's being reported he looks thinner now. He's thinking of retiring. We already knew that. He's been training with Alex Guerrero, Tom Brady's trainer, who Belichick banned from the premises last year. And there's a report from Karen Garigian that that Belichick called out Gronk in front of the team last year in camp about that as well. So, Jackie, what are you buying? What are you selling from all this? Well, I'm buying Karen's reporting because she's as plugged in as anybody to the Patriots. And I'm also buying that the cause of the friction between Belichick and Gronk probably is Alex Guerrero. Because Alex Guerrero is causing friction all over that facility. I will say this. If you are a professional athlete and you go to a guy, regardless of his credentials, and he makes you feel better, and he makes you feel more pliable and, and more apt to complete your job in a great way, you have the option and the choice to go with that guy. There's two enormous things to consider here. One is from the Gronk perspective. Do you think he's contemplating retirement? I do not. You do, do not, not. Not at all. Okay. And then from the Patriots' perspective, you think they're tiring of Gronk. Chances they would trade Gronkowski before week one. I can't imagine why you would do that. That's professional suicide. All right. Woody Page, how about you? Zero chance. So, I mean, think about it. Gronk is the reason why Tom Brady has been so successful. He's the tight end that nobody can defend. He, you notice that last year, even though he was suspended for a game and he was hurt for a while, he still had one of his best seasons ever, over 1,000 yards in re- receiving yards, and he's still the best tight end in football. Uh, Belichick can call him out at practice, but he needs him for every game in order for him to get back to the Super Bowl. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that he's not going to do anything. We have seen as a result of what Guerrero's responsibility is in this that they have a bit of an ego battle here, and Belichick is a guy that likes to be in control. So Gronk obviously has a lot of weight in the scenario because he's there's not replaceable, and he can choose to retire. So they might not want to, but they might choose to do it just so Belichick feels better about himself. I think this is a weird situation for Kron- Kronkowski because he wants to stay. Absolutely. And let's remember, they won a Super Bowl without him. Despite the friction, let's remember, if they stop Philadelphia on a fourth down, they win another Super Bowl. I believe that when Gronkowski is talking about retirement, guess what? You're, you're kind of mentally there already. He's taken so many huge hits over his career. I hope he does the right thing. So, odds maker, what do you think the chances are he retires? I think there's a chance. I say 60%. Zero percent. Zero. Wow. Jackie's got zero. What do you got say zero? Fifteen percent. And Clint's got fifteen. We'll move on. Buy or sell three. Laboring or throwing a no hitter. That is the question. Ray Royals Jacob Eunice hadn't allowed a hit through the fifth or sixth inning yesterday, but he had hit three batters himself and walked two. And Ned Yost was thinking of polium. Yost did not know he had a no hitter at the time. Oblivious, he said of himself. Eunice wound up going seven, one hit. Clinton buy or sell that. I'm buying it. Look, if the eyeball test from the manager says the guy's laboring, I believe it. Number two, a no-no doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win a game. And number three, look, if you want to get him out, get him out. It would turn out to be the right decision. I sold him. Clinton, the haircut makes you look younger, sound smarter. A sports writer yeah. notices the no-hitter. The manager's thinking he's struggling. I don't have a problem with that. Mm-hmm. Mac? I'm going to make it unanimous because it's all about mechanics for the, the, the manager. He's looking, is, he, is he laboring? Is he tiring? Is he hurt? I'm, I'm going to make it three for three here. You're going to yeah. make it unanimous until we get to what he pays. Let's see how unanimous. Yeah, it's, Jackie, it's not unanimous. The manager, <laughs> look at the scoreboard. Jordan Spieth, look at the scoreboard. The guy's got a no-hitter. It's not Sistine Chapel perfect, but it's a no-no. You don't even think about taking him out, which he was doing. All right, Woody Page, uh, the blackboard behind you. This is Tyler Kelman's second blackboard of the day because he won our bracket challenge. MJ played against ice cream truck drivers and plumbers. Oh. His name is up there. Here's how you get in touch with him to play. Don't call me. (laughs) Well, that's out there, right? That's part of this LeBron uh, versus MJ debate now that's happening. The competition wasn't. Jackie, you're shaking your head. MJ, he was a bum. Yeah, he was a bum, that Michael Jordan. (laughs) Overrated. What did he ever do? Woody, I saw Lightning Yates. Stop it. Clint Yates, Jackie McMullen Showdown. Chris Davis, bat break. Rate it. Gosh. I bet. He's led off for the Orioles this season. He's three for 34, five walks. Grade that experiment, Clinton. 
Uh, first of all, when it comes to the bat break, the best bat breaker of all time was Bo Jackson, and the best one he did was over his helmet, over his head. So this one gets a B, that one gets an A. As for Chris Davis, look, I know he strikes out a lot, and he hits a lot of bombs. This hasn't gone well, but I trust Buck Showalter the most when it comes to these matters. I trust Buck Showalter, too, but it just doesn't... I, I, maybe I'm old-fashioned, but a guy like Davis is your leadoff guy. Put him in the meat of the order with guys on base. That gets all these sluggers adrenaline going. As for the bat break, I'm just thinking about that over my knee or your knee, Clinton, and we're in intensive care for three weeks. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I don't think... I mean, we see Buck it happen Showalter. from time to time in baseball. No one ever realizes how impossible it would be for a normal moral to do that. We'll move on. Jeff Duncan. Time <laughs> The Zurich Classic of New Orleans announced today that it'll be the first PGA Tour event to feature walk-up music. Good idea or bad idea, Jackie? Tremendous. I'm thinking of Patrick Reed going up bad to the bone. I'm thinking of Tiger Woods saying, I'm back in the saddle. I mean, I can name all of them for you. Yeah, you can also Run get a good idea, idea right bad idea, great <laughs> idea. This is exactly what I need to get back into the PGA Tour. I told you before, Tiger being gone drew me away from the game. Him coming back has not brought me back. This, this is, is the kind of thing to that will get back me back. Into the PGA Tour. Did we, Jackie, just making sure, we didn't, we, we won't get sued for that. There was less than five seconds for each song you right. sang there. So, I, I finally learned to just keep it short. Thank you. Take 30 seconds. Uh, I gotta tell, I, I read with great interest the comments that Pat Riley made in Ian Thompson's wonderful new book called The Soul of Basketball, finally revealing for us his feelings about LeBron James. I don't know about you guys, but I can remember the day they had that unbelievably ridiculous rally with the smoke and the cheerleaders in the band. And they showed, they panned to Pat Riley sitting there, and I kept thinking, he can't be in favor of this. Now we learn in Ian's book, he wasn't. He was so busy negotiating the contracts, he didn't know anything about it. Makes me feel better about Pat Riley. 209 career wins for Jackie Mack, the fourth fastest to 209. Congratulations. We're back tomorrow.